in progress. Mm -hmm. Three keys to creating. Three keys to creating the life you love. So my name is Inga Maskun. I am a certified dream builder coach and life mastery consultant with the Brave Thinking Institute. I want to make sure that you have pen and papers handy or maybe a notebook. We will be doing some fun exercises. And as I mentioned before, it is a participative class. So I would invite you to raise your hand digitally when you answer questions, or you can also do the chat, although I can't see the chat. So Jen will help me to read the chat when you answer questions. Have your pen and paper handy and we get started. So here's the first thing I would like you to choose. What best describes you at this moment out of this five? Pick the number and you just write it down. So my goal Today is not to teach you something you don't know. Instead, I will reignite the things you've already known, yet you haven't practiced for a while. And my mentor, mentor uh, reminds me of this quote, and I love it. What ripe, what's ripe rots, what's green grows. So if you are willing, to stay on the green edge of growth during this presentation, I invite you to touch your heart and say, yes, I'm in. Thank you very much. You have made a great decision to be here today. Here's my sincere intention for you, that you will walk away from this presentation having greater clarity on what your goals and dreams are toward the life you love, having three tools to help you achieve those goals and dreams even faster than you imagine, and feeling even more confident in the power that lies within you to achieve those dreams and goals. Now, to help you take the first step, I'm going to share a story with you. But before we continue, and this is why I would love you to chat in, or you can raise your digital hand. How many of you speak more than one language? It doesn't have to be fluent, but you speak more than one language. Anybody? Can I see a hand raised? <laughs> Do you see any hand raised, Jan? No, I don't. No. Oh, nobody speaks more than language. One language. Okay. That's okay. Okay. So here's the first story. A mother mouse is leading her three children through a house. When all of a sudden, they come around a corner and see a cat. The cat is ready to attack the baby mice. So in an effort to protect her children, the mother mouse then says in a very loud voice, Ruff, Ruff, Ruff. The cat gets so scared, it runs off. The mother mouse then turns to her babies and says, Now children, always remember this moment. Never underestimate the power of learning more than one language. <laughs> That's a fun story. But the cat actually represents what was standing in the way of where the mouse wanted to be. Right now, there is something standing between you and what you want. Knowing the language of success will help you overcome any difficulty you are facing right now. That was the language of success for Mother Mouse. 
there is a language of success for us humans. You can call it a pattern, a system, or a way of doing things that creates the result you want. Once you understand what this language is, you can apply it to any area of your life that you want to improve. Now, let me ask you a question. You can raise your hand. How many of you have ever achieved a dream or a goal in life that when you first had that dream or goal, you did not know how you were going to achieve it. Anybody? If you don't know how to raise your hand digitally, it's actually good. Angela, thank you very much. A few of you. Somebody else? For those of you who don't know how to raise your hand, if you wanted to know, down at the bottom of your screen, there is a little smiley face that says reactions. And if you pull that up, you can lower your hand, raise your hand, you can do a thumbs up. There's a couple different emojis that you can use. Yeah. Just in case. Just in case you don't know. Okay. So if you want to add your hand, digital hand, to this question, you have achieved a dream or goal that when you first had it, you didn't know how you were going to achieve it. Now that proves a point for both Jen and Angela and some of you that I don't see a uh, hand, but you may actually answer it in your, your, in your mind. That proves a point that we are all are more capable than we realize. You might not realize it at that moment, but there is something in the quality of your thinking that had helped you create that result. Now, what I have learned during the many opportunities I've had learning this system, implementing it in my own life, guiding my clients and speaking to different groups is that more often than not, our dreams and goals are born out of the challenges we are facing. In other words, out of the pain we are currently experiencing. Now here's another question. Raise your hand. If you currently have some areas of your life that you would like to improve, something in life that's causing you some discomfort, perhaps in your career or in a relationship, perhaps with your health or with the amount of money you have or the lack of free time. I want you to keep your hands up if you would love to have that problem solved. Thank you, Judy and Angela. Now, we live in the universe that speak to us about the dreams and goals we have in two signals of growth. One of them is through our longing, and the other one is through our discontent. So that means the longing for something you haven't yet created and the discontentment with the current circumstances. In other words, you can say, pain of your problem and the burning desire for what you want. These two are essential signals, essential energies for creating new results and pulling you toward the life you love to live. Now let me share a time in my life, this is my story, a time in my life when a longing pulled me toward what I wanted. It was Thursday, May 1st, 2014. I sat across from my health coach, and for the last two years working with her, I had been sharing my longing about understanding my body even better, connecting with it on a deeper level. And she handed me a leaflet 
about the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. So the word nutrition caught my attention. So that night, I went online and I checked it out. I even got on a complimentary webinar the next day. And then by Monday, someone from the admission office called me and she interviewed me. And then at the end of it, she said, you are qualified to be a student here. So the class, she said, would start May 12th, so the next week. The deadline to register was May 6th with a registration fee of $1,500. Everything was moving fast. For sure, I didn't plan to, you know, this thing to be happening this quick for me. But I could feel a seat had been saved for me. So raise your hand if you have experienced a moment in life when you knew something was meant to be. Anybody? Sorry, Inga, I accidentally muted you. How far did I go without people listening? Oh, just for when, a second. You, okay, you good, just good, asked good. your question, yes. So oh, okay, you, so. Go ahead and repeat your question and then we'll, we'll keep going. Wonderful, okay, so that's okay. My question was, raise your hand if you have experienced a moment in your life when you knew something was meant to be. Great job. Now four people, Darlene and somebody on the iPhone, Jan, Angela, Judy. Good job. That was that moment for me. So that evening, when my husband came home, I told him what had happened. He looked at me and then he said, go for it. So the next day, I claimed my seat. On May 12th, I arrived in class. On the evening of that first day of class, my husband came home, walked into my office, and handed me a thick envelope. He motioned to me to open it. It was fresh 100 bills, 15 of them. Now raise your hand again. If you have experienced something just miraculously showed up for you, could be somebody that you didn't know came around and help you. I don't know how many of you are still. St okay, wonderful. I broadcast my burning desire to the universe by claiming my spot in the absence of knowing how things would unfold. And the universe was speeding the answer to me. I certainly couldn't make that happen, but I did make it welcome. Now, I share this story with you not to brag, but to reignite within you a similar story you may have experienced before. And I'm sure you have. And you, my friends, you can make this welcome more frequently. So now, let me ask you, what is your dream? What is your next big dream? Let's fast forward all the way to the time when you are putting your head on the pillow for the last time. All of us will reach that point in life. It's not if or when, everybody would get there. Now, what is the one thing you would regret not doing when that time comes? Think about this dream for a moment. And imagine how you would feel if this dream became a reality. In the Dream Builder program, which is one of the programs of the Brave Thinking Institute that I am certified in, there are 10 keys 
that will skyrocket your success when you apply them to your life. Tonight, we are going to learn three of them, which you can immediately apply to help you create the life you absolutely love. Now, if you are in for the possibility of creating something even more amazing for your life, make this commitment now and silently say to yourself, yes, I'm in. Now, does that mean that from this moment on, all your dreams will come true? Of course not. But this commitment is the important first step you make to yourself. Now, here is my promise. In the next 45 minutes we have together, and at the end of this presentation, I'm going to extend my support as a gift to you to help you integrate the information you learned today into your life. And I will share that uh, gift towards the end of this presentation. For now, let's play the first game. And I call this the numbers game. So here's how it goes. I'm going to explain it to you first. In a moment, I will share a sheet of paper. I will upload it that has the number one through 50. Your job is to mentally circle the number in numerical order, starting with number one, number two, number three, and so on and so forth. The goal is to find as many number as you can, and I will time you as many number as you can within 60 seconds. Okay, are you ready? You can start. Thirty more seconds. Three, two, one and stop. Just so you know, this is not about a performance test. This is only to prove a point, which I will explain to you later. Okay, now look at this page and imagine that I fold this paper twice, top to bottom, left to right. So this is how it looks. Now I'm going to show you a pattern that you can follow that has the potential to help you increase your results. So notice number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What did you notice? It follows a counter not the counter, clockwise movement. So now you know the pattern. Let's repeat this exercise one more time and see what result you have. You have exactly 60 seconds, exactly 50 numbers, and you can begin now.
20 more seconds. And stop. Uh, I would invite you to lower your hands unless this is the answer that you have. Raise your hand if you circle more numbers the second round than you did the first one. Good job. Good job. Wonderful. Quite a number of you. So, now this is interesting. You were given the same resources, the same amount of time, the same 50 numbers, but you improved the result. What changed? You can either type it in or you can unmute yourself quickly and tell me. What changed, you think? Exactly the same thing. Everything was the same but you improve your result the second time. Anybody wants to answer that question? We had Elizabeth and Darlene both uh, saying that they knew the pattern. Ha, wonderful Elizabeth and Darlene, thank you very much. You knew the pattern. That means you expanded your awareness of the pattern or how to create the results you wanted or in other words this is the pattern of success now this proves a point that every one of you every one of us can improve the results we are getting in our life when we expand our awareness of the pattern for how to create those results right and that is what we're going to learn in this class today. Now, let's learn how to expand our awareness for success. Look at the four domains of life. These are four domains in life. Love and relationship, health and well-being, freedom in terms of time and money, and vocation. Every one of us has results in each of these areas in life. Now, the results you're getting in life in these areas are a perfect reflection of your awareness in these areas, just based on the numbers game that we just did together. Now, let's expand your awareness by studying the patterns that creates those results, or what I call the result formula. And the formula goes like this. Thoughts cause feelings. So when you feel joyful thoughts, you feel happy. When you think about all the things left to do and how there is no time to do them, you may feel stressed and overwhelmed. Your thoughts affect your physiology. Your feelings affect cause actions. It is by law. Your feelings must be expressed into your actions. Try this out. Uh, Jen may actually help me here. Or you can do it yourself. Uh, I can't see all of you. Try this out. Put on a physical posture or facial expression of someone who is depressed. can't see any of you, but I'm just imagining here that we all know how to do that. Most of us will actually have our shoulders down, our head down, frowning face. I want you to shake it out. Now, put on the body position of someone who is confident, happy, and, had, and just had a major success. I assume you sit straight up, shoulders back, 
and a smile came back to your face. Now our feelings are expressed into our action. When you feel confident and energized, you take different action than when you feel depressed, frustrated, and sad. And then action causes results. It is our actions or lack of that create our results. So now follow me. Thoughts cause feelings. Feelings cause actions and actions cause results. What is the conclusion? You can type it in. Or you can unmute yourself quickly and just give me the answer. What is the conclusion? Did anybody answer, uh, Jen? No, not yet. I unmuted okay. my, this is Carrie. Yes, I Carrie. taking a look at it. So what you think is going to give you your results. Absolutely correct. Wonderful. It is. This is the law of cause and effect. Yet some people resist this concept because most people look at their results. They look at their circumstances and conditions and they call those their causes. I, uh, sorry, I take it back. No, they don't call them their causes. They call them their becauses. So I can't start a new career because I'm too old. I would lose my benefits. I can't take time off because I don't have vacation time or my boss won't let, won't let me. I can't find the love of my life because I'm not young enough, I'm not thin enough, I'm not attractive enough. I can't because, because, because. Now yet the true cause of all the results is actually right here. Like Carrie was saying, in the thought, our results are caused by what we have been thinking. This is the first cause. Now, the good news is, if you want to know and want to create a new result in your life, just begin by creating new thinking. Isn't that easy? <laughs> There's another exercise here. Let's, let's look at this exercise. I usually share this uh, video with a group um, or gathering, at a group or gathering, where, where I give a speech to. And this is what I call tuning your attention. Now let's do that. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? What did you just learn from watching that video? You can unmute or type it in. This is Carrie again. Would it be where yes. you put your thoughts is where you're going to go? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So there is an area in our brains that's called the reticular activating system, whose job is to mediate 
our overall level of consciousness or awareness. In other words, its job is to bring into our awareness what we focus on and filter out what we're not looking for. So what we pay attention to, we will see. We've heard this quote maybe. Seek and you shall find. Here's the interesting part. Most of us were taught to focus our thoughts on what is in front of us. What we can capture by our senses. What we have experienced before. In other words, what's reasonable, what's safe, what's missing, what problems we may face. These are all what we focus on, and that's what we see. If we want to change our result, we must start by changing our focus. We don't deny the fact that we see, but we can change our focus. So that focus is very important. Remember this thing. Highly successful people, they always begin with the end in mind. They know what the outcome they wanted. And they become clear on that. So because where your attention goes, energy flows. In a way, that's what Kerry said before. If you embrace this concept, you begin to see resources, opportunities that other people miss. Now, this brings us to key number one of the dream building program, which is designing a dream. Now, the question is, what do you want? What would you love, really love in your life? Write this down. Clarity is power. Without a clearly defined blueprint, you cannot build your dream. Just like you must have a clear blueprint if you want to build a house. The same is true with your dream. When you become clear on what you want in your life, you begin to see, as I mentioned before, opportunities, ideas, resources that you would otherwise miss. Remember that thing before with the moon walking bear. You didn't put your attention there, so you missed it the first time. The second time, you did. Because you told yourself, based on the guide, the guiding, the guide, and say, did you see the moon walking bear? And then boom, you started thinking about it. So think about stuff that actually grow you toward your dream. The question is very important. Now, let's look at the four domain of life again. With love and relationship, health and well-being, time and money, freedom and vocation. Now, for our purposes tonight, I invite you to choose only one area that you would really love to improve the most, where you would love to see the result in. Later, you can apply this exercise to all areas of life, but for tonight, let's just pick one. Now, give yourself permission to imagine like when you did when you were a kid. Many of us had a rich imagination when we were a kid. Nothing was impossible. We didn't think about our conditions, our situations, or circumstances. We just declared what we wanted. A fireman, an astronaut, a movie star, a ballerina, a doctor, and so on and so forth. Now, I challenge you to dream big again right now. We're going to unlock your imagination with this simple question to ask yourself, what would I love in my life? Now, you receive different answers inside yourself when you ask, what would I love compared to 
what do I think I can do? Or what does the economy say I can do? What is this? What is my current situation say I can do? Worse yet, what do other people think I should do? Uh, there is this quote by Howard Thurman. I love quotes. He was Dr. Martin Luther King's mentor. And Mr. Howard Thurman said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful quote? So for a moment, just lean into that question. What would I love in my life, in this area that I pick? I'm going to take you through a process called the time machine. So take your pen and paper and write this statement across the top of the page. I am so happy and grateful now that dot dot dot. I am so happy and grateful now that dot dot dot. Now, take your pen down. I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Now imagine, imagine you are traveling three years into the future. This is exactly the same day, the same evening, the same date and month, but it's three years into the future. Everything you wanted completely worked out. Imagine, this is the important thing though, I want you to suspend the urge to figure out how this result is going to happen. So I'm going to make a reminder here at the beginning. Everything worked out, completely worked out, and suspend the urge to figure out the how. So imagine a genie granted all what you wanted and you have created exactly what you love in your life. Dream big. Suspend your judgment. So here's another reminder. You are now aware that your results in life starts with your thoughts. This is the first step of building your dream life. You need to start with the blueprint of that dream. So continue closing your eyes. Take a deep breath, deep breath. Imagine it is three years from today and everything worked out. All the challenges are solved. What would you love for your life? What is happening in this area of your life that you have selected? What great things are happening right now for you? What are you doing that brings you joy? What experiences are you having? Who are you with? Who are around you? Where are you at the moment? How does it feel? Truly feel it. I want you to describe everything in your mind in present tense, using all your senses. You see it, you hear it, you touch it, you smell it, you taste it. Do you have that moment? Now you can open your eyes. I'm going to give you 90 seconds to write down your, what you just imagined. Use simple words. Don't go too uh, 
long. But use positive words and descriptive words. Everything that you just imagined in 90 seconds, write down everything you love in present tense. So you are, it is happening now and you are experiencing that moment now. Okay, you can begin. Forty five more seconds. And you can put your pen down. Realize this. This is the beginning of designing a life you would love. You are on your way toward your dream. I know you might not know how this dream is going to happen, but that's absolutely okay. So now that you have started a clearly defined dream, Let's head towards key number two. And key number two starts with this quote from Bob Proctor. So I'll let you read it. So there is a single mental move you can make which in a millisecond will solve enormous problems for you, he says. It has the potential to improve almost any personal or business situation you will ever encounter. And it could literally propel you down the path to incredible success. And he says, we have a name for this magic mental activity. And it is called decision. And that is the dream building key number two. Deciding for your dream. Now, you must have a firm decision for what it is that you want before you can bring your dream into reality. Some of you may have heard the name Napoleon Hill. He is an author of the book, Think and Grow Rich. Now, Napoleon Hill, after studying 25,000 men and women, he concluded that highly successful people form the habit of making decisions quickly and changing them seldom, if ever. While unsuccessful people make decisions slowly and change them frequently, he said. It is the decision that you are willing to make that shape your life. Now, here's another story. A story about a man who uh, go to a bank to cash a check. So he walked down to the teller and then he said, can you cash this check for me, please? So the teller looks at the check and he says, yes, of course, I can cash this check for you. Just sign your name on the back of it and I'll give you the money. The man then says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. 
I don't want to sign my name on the back of the check and hand it to you. You'll be holding my check with my name on it. And you might decide not to give me the money. So the teller says, well, sir, you have to sign your name on the back of that check before I can give you the money. It's banking policy. The man argues back and forth, and the teller finally says, I am so sorry. I don't think I can help you. So the man then goes to the next bank, then the next bank, and he goes through the same routine, and he is refused service. Finally, in the last bank, the teller has just had it with this man. He pulls out a rubber baseball bat from underneath his seat, reaches across the counter, whacks the man on the head, and says, sign the darn check. The man startled, he signs the check, hands it over, and he gets the money. So with money in hand, the man goes back to the first bank, goes through the first teller, and he says, hey, look, down the street, I got my money. The teller just looks at him, and he says, sure. But I bet you, even down the street, you had to sign your name first on that check. And the man says, well, yeah, I did. But you see, no one have ever explained it the way they did. <laughs> I love this story. Because I believe in, believe that on many levels, this is my story and this is your story. We go to the teller of life often. We go to our imagination, we go to our dream for our life, for our business, and we say, I really want my life to be like this, my career to be like this. I want my income, my relationship, my health to be like this. And we describe it. Then life says to us, wait. Then go ahead, sign your name to it first. Become the thing you say you want and I will cash that check for you. But we back up and we often say, no, no, no. Give me the resources first. In other words, when the economy is good, when my career is growing, when I have the money, the time, when I've got the confidence, when things change around me first, then I will sign my name to it. Then I will commit to the thing I say I want. Think about it. How often you respond this way. I want you to raise your hand, digital hand, and say, have you ever respond this way to life? Thank you, Judy. I have done it many times in the past. I still did it but I realize it more quickly now. Thank you, Judy. We must be willing to sign our name on the, thing we, on the thing we want and take action in the absence of knowing all the steps if we want to achieve the dream that we love. Remember my story before. And once we do that, even in the absence of a perfect condition, or situation or circumstance, the whole manner of thing begins to happen and rush to your aid for the fulfillment of that decision. So here's another story. <clears throat> this story is a true story of a lady named Judy. Her situation was most likely very different from yours. Yet the steps she took are exactly what you can take to achieve your dream, no matter how big your dream is. So here's how it goes. Judy is a single mother of two children who have minimal education. They live in a one bedroom apartment. Judy worked in a fast food restaurant during the day. Then in the evenings, she would do alterations as a seamstress. 
Judy's dream, though, was to have a bigger home for her family. Despite really wanting this dream, she found herself thinking over and over again. There is no way I'm going to get out of here. Out of this situation, I'm going to be stuck here in this forever. The apartment was $500 a month, and Judy felt that was all she could do. Now, perhaps you have been there facing a challenge that seemed huge, and you didn't know how to solve it. That was where Judy was. And then Judy came across a program, a program like the one I'm sharing with you tonight. She decided that if she was going to change her life, she needed support. So she took a huge leap, she decided for her dream, and she enrolled in the Dream Builder program. Now, while working with her coach, Judy shared her dream to have a home for her family. But I've done the math, she said. With my current income, there is absolutely no way I could realize this dream. I've looked and looked. There is no way I can get a house for $500 a month. Now, here's how her coach guided Judy. She asked her to describe the dream house she wanted. Just like you did earlier, describing what you love in present tense as if it is happening right now. Judy began to describe it, but she was stuck in what she had, which is $500. And the coach kept asking Judy to trust the process. Let's get clear on the dream, the kind of house you would really love. Describe it to me. Said. Now here's the message from life, from the universe. When you form a mental picture of your dream, you become a magnet to the resources you don't even know exist. Judy eventually was able to paint the picture of a house where she and her children could live. In this home, there was an arch doorway. There were three bedrooms. There would be a small picket fence in front and fence backyard where they could have a dog. She wanted an older house that she could fix up. She wanted a window over the kitchen sink. And she also wanted a fireplace. So here's what the coach's next guiding question. So Judy, if you didn't believe this was impossible, what would you do? She asked. After thinking for a while, Judy said, well, I guess I could be looking for the house. Her coach then said, okay then, go look for the house. To which Judy answered, this doesn't make sense. Why look for a house that I cannot afford? Judy's coach assured her by saying, I didn't ask you to buy the house. All I said was go look for the house. Judy finally willing to participate in this process. So she started house hunting. Two weeks later, she came to her coach smiling. I found a house. Oh my gosh, she said. This house has everything I had imagined. But, and she started to cry. The rent was $900 a month. I now feel worse than before, she said. I can see what I want, but I cannot have it. It's $400 a month more than I have. There's no way I can do this. Her coach then calmly said to her, well, Judy, suppose a part of you didn't know it was impossible for you to have this house. What then would you do? Judy said, I don't know. She was convinced by her condition it was impossible. 
A coach didn't give up. Stay in the question, Judy, she said. If you did not know this was impossible and you really thought there was a chance, what could you do? Now remember, the quality of your life is framed by the quality of question you are willing to ask. Most of us learn to ask very weak questions of the universe. What do I think I can do? What does my bank account say I can do? What does my current job say I can do? Judy started leaning in and she kept asking the question. And then suddenly she thought a new language and an idea came to her. You know, she said, if I thought I could have the house, I would write a letter to the owner and tell him about my dream, what I would do if I had that house for a year. Judy finally did. She listed 40 things she would do if the landlord would let her have the house for $500 a month. All she, he had to do was provide the supplies and she would do all the work. She wrote everything, she put the letter in the mailbox, and she mailed it. Three weeks later, Judy called the coach, absolutely beaming, and she said, Oh my gosh, the landlord called me last night. And he said, I had this letter on my desk for over a week, along with two other applicants who are willing to pay the complete $900 a month and a deposit. And then he said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but something in your letter just won't leave me alone. So here's the deal. I'm going to have you sign a contract for work completed every quarter. You figure out how you're going to do this work over the year. I will provide the equity for the work and you provide the sweat. If you will do what you say you are going to do, I will help you out and you can have this house for a year for $500 a month. 30 days later, Judy and her children move into their dream home. The story didn't end there. What happened for Judy over the next year was that she experienced herself as a much more expanded person, much more capable, much more creative. And that's what happens with dream building. Within the next year, she quit her job and she started a home-based business. Her income dipped a little bit at first, then began to improve. She led a happier life and she spent way more time with her children. Three years later, she bought that home. Now, there are some who would say there is no way to get from where she was, $500 a month, resources for a rent, no education, working two jobs, to being where she was three years later, a successful business owner and a homeowner. With the help of her coach, she accessed a different level of thinking. She created a clear blueprint of her dream. She made the decision to act in the face of challenging con conditions. Here's the takeaway from Judy's story. If you want to cash a check, you need, you need to fill out the amount and sign your name on that check. In terms of your dream, that means you must be specific and clear about what you want. And then putting your name on the check means making a decision for your dream by saying, yes, this is the life I would love to live. You took, you made that powerful decision. Just like Judy, you have created a blueprint and decided for your dream. And now, let's talk about key number three. 
which involves overcoming what stops most people from bringing their dream right into their reality. So I want you to text this in the chat. Can any of you guess what stops most people from bringing their dream right into reality? What usually happens? What stops them? What stops us? Darlene? Fear. Oh, it's Jen. See, fear. Yeah. Anybody else? Fear. I hope everybody is still here. <laughs> that is what the dream building key number three. It is guiding you on how to befriend your fear. And here's what I mean by befriending your fear. It means doing the thing you really want to do, even when fear rises and tries to stop you. Make fear your friend. Great dream building requires the ability to suspend knowing how and taking action in the absence of knowing all the answers. The reason fear shows up is usually because we try to figure out the how. Of course, we never done it before. This is a dream, new dream. If we knew it, we would have done it. Not knowing the how usually is why we are fearful. So when you decide for a dream, there is a part of you that says, ooh, yes, I want it. There is a part of you that says, ooh, you're right. How are you going to do that? You've never done it before. Or who do you think you are? You don't have all it takes. What is that voice? That's the voice of fear. It's the part of you wants things to stay status quo. Only a part of you, because the other part wants to go for that dream. They, these are the voices that, uh, that say, now is not a good time. Wait until later. How long have you been waiting? You don't have the money for that. That's irresponsible. It's the voice that says, you don't have the experience or the credential. It is the part of you that asks, what if you fail? Okay, what if you fail? Raise your hand. How many of you have had failure in life before? Raise your digital hand. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We all have, we all have failure in the past. They still do that. Look at this. When we were babies, we all started out as non-walkers. As a non-walker, you saw people walking around you and you wanted to be, you wanted that level of freedom for yourself. You wanted to be upright and not to be floor, floor bound. What did you do next? You rose up, tried to take a, a step, and then you fell down. When you were learning to walk, never once you fall down and think to yourself, well then, that's it. I guess I'm not meant to be a walker. No, you rose up and you get going and with each try, you took a few more steps, a few more steps, until you finally became a walker. Something happens, though, when we become adults. We stop giving ourselves permission to fall down. If we fall down in business, we say, I guess I'm not meant to be a business owner. If we fall down in love, we say, I guess love isn't in the cards for me. It is falling down and rising up. That's actually the key to achieving your dream. We must befriend our fear and give ourselves permission 
to fail enough to succeed. Because great dream builders are willing to fail and rise again. Look at this example. This is a short video. Dismissed from drama school with a note that read, wasting her time, she's too shy to put her best foot forward. Turned down by the Decca recording company who said, we don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. A failed soldier, farmer, and real estate agent. At 38 years old, he went to work for his father as a handyman. Cut from the high school basketball team, he went home, locked himself in his room, and cried. The teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything and he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Fired from a newspaper because he lacked imagination and had no original ideas. His fiance died, he failed in business twice, he had a nervous breakdown and he was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never lived. Absolutely true. Fear and failure are prerequisites for achieving great dreams. So don't fearful, don't be fearful about failure. So when the voice, now next time, when the voice of doubt question you and ask you, what if you fa fail? Let your response be good news. I am at the green edge of growing, right? Now, how do you give power to that part of you that wants to move forward, especially when you hear the voice that wants you to play small? There is a whole process to this that, that I take my clients through in the Dream Builder. And for this purpose tonight, I'm going to give you one thing you can do. And this is an additional thing for tonight. There is, um, remember, I think Carrie was saying that before, where your attention goes, your energy flows. So notice when next time you have thoughts going towards limitation, interrupt that refocus your mind on the dream you had written down your dream before and then take action just one simple action this is why writing down your dream is so important the blueprint we talked about earlier when your dream is clear you can easily go back to it or go to it and reconnect with it this action is very key because it tells your subconscious mind that you are very serious about your new results. You want it. And over time, when you keep doing this, the old paradigm, the old limiting beliefs will begin to solve. Dissolve. Dissolve away. And that is another part of the dream building is number reconnect to your dream and here's the important steps you can take today ask this question what's one action i can take that would move me in the direction of my dream look at your list of dreams that you wrote down before Pick one dream that resonates the most with you tonight. Pick just one. And then ask this question. What is the one action I can take that would move me in the direction of this dream? One simple thing. The choices and actions you take today 
are ultimately who you become tomorrow. Okay. Write that down. One simple action. Now, as promised, I have a gift for you. And then we'll close with a story. But first, let's recap what we have covered before. Okay. Designing your dream is the first key. You must have a blueprint of what you want. Because in order to achieve it, you must be clear on what this blueprint is. Key number two, the power of decision. You must decide for the one thing or the many things that you love in the absence of knowing how. Key number three is befriending your fear and reconnecting to your dream. Reconnecting when your fear shows up, reconnect to that dream. So it's very important to have a clear dream. Now, those are just three out of the 10 keys to the Dream Builder program. Were they helpful to you? Raise your hand if those are helpful so far for you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That makes me happy. Okay, so here's the special gift for you. Now, you have learned through the numbers exercise that there is an invisible pattern to success, right? And when you expand your awareness of that pattern, your result naturally increase. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you feel connected to the vision and dream you just wrote? All the list you can bring. If, if it is, you can keep your hands up. This is from the previous question. Keep your hands up or you, everybody else can put your hands up as well. Now, the key here is, if you feel so connected to it, and you feel you really would love this in your life, you believe if this dream comes to, a, to fruition, it would make a difference in your life, that the key is here. You must take the first action step as soon as possible. Because be aware. The limiting paradigms will always try to get you. Remember Judy's story when she kept talking herself down. Remember how clever limiting beliefs sound like. Now, my question is, would you love some support to step into that vision immediately? Step into action to get closer or the direction of your dream. Would you love to integrate the key, the keys that you learned tonight into your life and start living that life you love? Now, between my speaking engagement and coaching schedule, I carved out some time each week for what I call clarity session. This is a 60 minute phone call. I added 15 more minutes. I think Jen had shared with you uh, 45 minutes. It's 60 minute phone conversation or Zoom conversation where we get clear on exactly where you are, what you would love to create, and the next most important step you can take that will move you in the direction of your dream. This is a one-on-one -on -one session and it's valued at $300. If you are ready to invest in achieving your dream, your next step is a clarity session with me at no charge as a gift to you from me. And here's what you need to do. Text your name, phone number, and email to me. Either text it to me to my phone or text it to, through Messenger, Facebook Messenger. And just say to, to me there, clarity session, please. I know this is a holiday week here in the US. Thursday is our Thanksgiving. 
We are grateful for many things in life, and I want you to realize I am grateful that you have a dream, that you came to this session, uh, this class tonight, two days before Thanksgiving. Let's give that dream wings to fly. Okay, now let's watch this closing video. I want you to ponder these four questions. The first question to ponder when you go home is why? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why study? Why put yourself out? Why try to earn as much as you can earn, share as much as you can share? Why try to become all that you can possibly become? Why develop yourself to the full? Why try to do it all? Why try to take on this much responsibility? Develop every skill you possibly can. See every human you possibly can. Go to every class you possibly can. Touch everybody you possibly can. Why do that much? Why go that far? Why share that much? Why give that much away? Why try to see everything? Why try to do everything? Why try to become everything? The first question to ponder when you go home is why? Here's another good answer to why. It's the second question, why not? Why not see how much you can earn? Why not see how much you can learn? Why not see how many skills you can develop? Why not see what kind of person you can become? Why not see what kind of influence you can have? Why not see how many people you can rescue from oblivion? I want you to take that personal. Why not? Why not? You've got to stay here till you go. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Why not see how much you can do, how far you can go? Now, now here's number three. Why not you? You've got the brains. You can make decisions. You can study the plan. You can change your life. You can grow immensely in the next few years. You can make your dreams come true. You can build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. You can become healthy. You can become powerful. Why not you? My very last question on the questions to ponder is why not now? There never was a better time. And what a time now for us to take this dream and not let it die. Take this dream and give it life. Take this dream and breathe into it your own personal spirit until finally it becomes a flame that burns around the whole world. <coughs> So Judy once sat where you are sitting, dreaming of a home. Never could she imagine she would be in a dream home in just a few short months. Short months. And in just three years, she would own that home. She became a dream builder. And so can you. So this is what good did, says. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Because boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. It has been a privilege and an honor for me to have spent this 75 minutes with you today. I thank you very much. And for those celebrating um, in the U.S., have a wonderful Thanksgiving moment with your loved ones. Stay safe. If you want to stay behind, I can answer some questions if you want. And I know um, Jen has already shared her email address if you would love to get the recording of this masterclass. Thank you very much. Darlene has a question.
Thank you, Darlene. I look forward to those who want to claim their clarity session, tax me or Facebook Messenger me. Thank, Thank you. you. That was really great. Thank you, Jen. Thank You're you, welcome. Marlene. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie. I don't know and again, if anyone would like to to ask a question, um, you can feel free to unmute. Thank you, Elizabeth, Arthur, Judy. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, Judy. I'm glad you could come. Thank you, Terry. I'll stay behind for a while in case you want to ask questions. Thank you very much, EMP123. I don't know who your name is. Thank you. I appreciate your presence. Somebody on the iPhone as well. Thank you very much. Anybody wants to ask questions? Anything I can help you with? I think they're all being shy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> okay. I don't, yeah, I don't think we're going to get any questions. So, uh, yep, just sure. if you are interested in reaching out to Inga. Oh, more for me, Terry. Okay, if you're feeling overwhelmed, where do you begin? Interesting. I would suggest, Terry, uh, schedule that clarity session for me. It is, uh, I can explore more when you're feeling overwhelmed. Where do you begin? We begin by identifying where it is coming. What's the source of that? You know, the source can actually be Oh, I don't have much time. I don't know what the what the topic is here that creates that overwhelming feeling. So that's that's the one that uh, we can clarify if we can talk each other. Yes, text me, text me. Yeah, let's schedule that. Yeah. This is a thank you, Terry. Thank you for the question. Yeah. And then if anybody missed Inga's information, you can go ahead and email me and I can get yeah. that to to her as well. So if that's um, yeah. if you didn't get the information at the end, we can definitely do that as well. Yeah, All I right, even well, have, yeah, go ahead. I even have uh, uh, openings for this week. If you want to get on the uh, clarity session this week. So don't worry about I see that some people may be outside of the US who don't observe Thanksgiving. Uh, if that is the time that you could do, just text me. We get it done. I suggest, though, don't wait too long because once you wait too long, it's going to dim and it wash away. There is a reason why that dream shows up tonight for you. <laughs> so, answer that. 
Okay. So have a great, great evening for the rest of you. Happy Thanksgiving again. Thank you very much, Jan, for inviting me back. Thank you, Inga. Everyone yeah. else, enjoy your night and take care. We'll see you at our next class. Yes. Bye.